Hello, this is Michelle, and this is my tutorial uh, with Easy Paint Tool Sci on line art. I am today. I'm line arting. Well, eventually getting into line arting. Um, Gintoki uh, from Gintama and Kakashi from Naruto Shippuden. Um, first of all, I'm just doing the the canvas size here. There's a few things I wanted to go over before I actually get into it. Um, usually you have a fair idea what size canvas, well, proportions of the canvas you want before you start drawing. In theory you know what you're going to be drawing before you get into it. Um, it's always something you can change later, so there's no drama. Um, I'm starting off with only 200 resolution because it's just the draft and... Actually I don't know why I start with 200 resolution. Te technically you could start off with you know, your usual 300 or 400. Sometimes I do go to 400 if I'm wanting lots and lots of detail. Um, you can always go back and change the size, so it's okay. Um, I'll just create that there. Okay, so, um, first of all, the stabilizer, which is over here. Um, I don't usually work on S7. I was just fiddling with it before because I was wondering, I, well, because I forget which way around it is. Uh, S1, you're looking at, I'll show, just show you here. Let's have a look. We'll go zoom in. On S1, twenty size brush. Uh, you're looking at really, you know, it doesn't alter your lines too much. Uh, S7, you start getting a little bit. See how it goes slower? That's because it is tracking your lines and sort of smoothing them as they go. So, um, with these just numbers. It's, um, I haven't found a whole lot of difference, to be honest. Um, they do slow it down a little bit, but it's not really smoothing it. So, I honestly do not know the difference, but just have a test and see what's right for you. Um, it might even change depending on what you're drawing in the picture. Uh, some people find it a lot easier to draw hair if the stabilizer is up higher. Uh, I just stick to S4, personally. Uh, so far I haven't changed that. Uh, now, um, take full advantage of this angle tool because it turns your canvas um, and then obviously you can just stop it by pressing stop. Uh, sorry I'm going through all the basics people. <clears throat> I do sort of feel the need to go all, all over the basics for the beginners out there. Uh, now, I find the uh, turning of the canvas very very useful because I am really bad at drawing anything I see this this is my favorite direction for everything I love this direction this is the best direction ever but as soon as I get to drawing this way I'd have a whole lot less control because I'm right-handed so ta-da you can turn your canvas and suddenly I'm drawing in the same direction as I love drawing in so it does work a lot better for people like me who, whoops, I've still got a, a texture on there. Uh, it, well, it helps for people like me who um, who know their own weaknesses. It's always useful to know your own weaknesses when it comes to drawing. Okay, um, so from here I am going to skip um, the the wireframe part of this. Uh, tutorial because it's incredibly incredibly boring and I'm just fiddling around a lot and uh, you guys don't need to see that okay so let's just skip to that part thanks <laughs> Ta -da! and this is the wireframe version uh, as you can see down the side there I've got three different layers uh, one for each character and one for the background uh, I'll switch them all to 40% uh, just so we can see what we're doing when we drew the when we draw the second stage draft. Not everyone has to have two drafts before they go to the line art. That's just me. It's easier for me to work out what's wrong with my picture if I give myself plenty of chance to work it out. Uh, uh, by the way, the size of your brush does vary. I'm reading my own notes. Size of the brush does vary depending on 
what size canvas you've got and the resolution. So I'm not gonna, there's no point telling you the exact numbers, although you can clearly see which ones I'm using because they just change that much depending on what sort of canvas you, you're working with. Um, I tend to use, most people are going to favour the brush, but I like the cleanness of the pen. The pen is harsher, um, well it's got harsher edges, uh, you can see for yourself if you try it out, see which one you'd prefer. Most people are going to go with the brush, but I find it a little less accurate. So that sort of loses me on that. Uh, I, but I do use the paintbrush for paintbrush. Why am I calling it paintbrush? I use it. I use the paint, the brush, the brush. I use the brush on the draft, just because it's nice and soft and and free. Uh, but yeah, I use the pen for the liner. Uh, in this one, I have actually coloured the lines so we can see which parts belong to which character. Uh, Gintoki is in red and Kakashi is in purple, the background's blue. Um, the references I've used for this one come from Senshi Stock and Hero Stock, I believe, from DeviantArt, but I will uh, reference them in the description because they've got some really good stuff. Uh, I wish Hero Stock had some more photos, really, hint hint, just you know, just saying, because there's so, there's like not enough male reference poses out there, honestly. I like, I really like the, the foreshortening pictures and ones where you can, the sort of dynamic ones that, I don't know, they're the most exciting to me. Um, but they're also the hardest to draw, so um, be careful of that. Uh, me personally, if I am not liking where a picture is going, I'll usually just give up on it. So I have a lot of unfinished ones. Uh, it's best to do something that you you have you know you have a pretty good chance of pulling off, because you know you're more likely to stick with it because you like where it's going. Uh, just a personal tip, I mean, it doesn't work for everyone. While the draft is still going, uh, I'll just run through what I know about anatomy. Uh, technically speaking, uh, of course, this does vary depending on your style, depending what looks right for you, um, because anime is very stylistic. Uh, just like any art form is, um, I mean, surreal isn't is hardly realistic, isn't it? So, is it? Is it? God, bad Englishes. Uh, so, it doesn't have to be anatomically correct per se. Uh, but I try to stick with what I know uh, for anatomy as close as I can with, without it looking wrong to me. Uh, there's supposed to be about an eye's width in between the eyes. And obviously by an eye's width, I mean the eye of the character you're drawing, naturally. Uh, there's pretty much the same sort of distance, no matter what uh, direction their their face is. Uh, but it does vary a little bit. You might want to be a little bit careful there. Also, side-on pictures, there's usually about an eye and a half uh, distance between the edge of the eye and the ear. Uh, ears, obviously, um, supposed to come... The bottom of the ear is supposed to be aligned with the bottom of the nose and the top of the ear with the eyebrow. Um, I'm not really sure uh, as far as uh, splitting up the face um, and and what quadrants go where, so I'm not even going to go in there because also it does depend on the style that you're drawing and everyone's style, you'd hope, is different. Uh, Eyes usually look best if they're just, depending on the angle obviously, just uh, just under halfway down the head. Um, body proportions, I'm not going to go into them because they're a little bit complicated as far as explaining goes, so I would suggest looking them up. Uh, it does help as a reference, and in general, using references is always a good idea. Uh, especially when it's body shots and you're not, if you're not very confident on drawing it, a reference will go a long way. 
by all means, if you see something wrong with your picture while you're staring at it, or um, you know, if you've gone away for a few hours and come back and it just doesn't, something about it just doesn't look right. By all means, change it. Um, the earlier, the better. Well, the, the earlier you notice it, the better, really, because if you leave it too long, it gets harder and harder to change. Um, in Easy Paint Tool Sci, uh, you can rotate. Uh, your line art, especially when it comes to your good copy of your line art, you, you, it's okay to rotate, but scaling will damage the, the the quality of the line art. So try not to, because uh, it could ruin it. And uh, basically, it's it, it, that part of the picture will require redrawing. Uh, well, you know, apart from the easy uh, undo tool, but uh, if if you want to fix it, you might just need to redraw it, um, unfortunately, uh, which is a big pain in the bum, but but sometimes necessary. There are a few other things that I wasn't sure needed stating. Um, if you notice, I do uh, zoom in and out a lot. Uh, I switch off the draft layer a lot just to see how the picture is going. Um, it does sort of help because sometimes the line art can get distracting. Um, you don't necessarily have to draw directly on the lines that you had in the line art. The whole purpose of, I suppose, doing a draft in the first place is to improve on it and fix things as you go. So that, as I said, that's why I have a couple of draft layers. Uh, so it's, it's always helpful to sort of click the layers on and off and or change the opacity even. You can have it lower than I have uh, just to make it less obvious. Uh, it depends what colour you're using really um, and it doesn't matter how rough the original draft was because you'll just fix it up later. Also I don't know if anyone noticed but um, I did create extra layers when I was doing Gintoki's hair for example uh, just because there was lots of strands going in opposing directions. Uh, any layer if you're drawing lines that you know are going to intersect other lines, um, it does make it easier to put them on different layers. Just a tip, because that way it makes it easier if you need to change them or um, or if you like part of the line and not the other part of the line, it just makes it easier for erasing or um, editing each line separately. So it doesn't really matter because you can always merge the layers later. Um, if you go over in the section for the layers there are there is a, a sort of like two pieces of paper with a scissors uh, and that pretty much cuts and copies whatever is on that layer to the layer below uh, that comes in really handy for pretty much making all the line art layers merge together before you start coloring but that's sort of the last thing you do before you uh, get to coloring uh, uh, I would say um, some people do like to have the hair or some parts of the clothing have a different colour line art to the rest of it. So feel free to keep those layers separate. Now how you do this, um, when you create the new layer over the top of the lines you want to colour, you just need to click Clipping Group, which is just above the layers and that will link it over the top so anything you draw onto that layer is only going to show up on whatever you have on the layer below and that's basically how you color lines um, but as I said not everyone colors their lines you don't really need to it's just a matter of taste um, sometimes it can reflect the tone of the picture you might want to do say navy lines for a picture that's set at night time or or sort of really dark red or magenta lines for a picture set in sunset or the daytime that sort of thing uh, it does sort of help with tone uh, for the overall picture but then again completely up to you see how you like it as a side note, I also really um, I'm so sorry about all of the pixelation. That's to protect the rights of uh, whoever owns the artwork that I have referenced in the video. So it does fa it has phased out. So it's not so bad at the moment. Sorry. Okay, we're almost finished. Um, the coloring video will 
once I get around to colouring it, um, yes, I hate hands, um, <laughs> once I get around to colouring it, will um, be uploaded next, uh, which will be a bit more in-depth, uh, and I can sort of go through a step-by-step -step process of how I colour certain things. Um, so in the meantime, it might be a while before I do that. Um, I've just got a couple of other projects that I want to do before then. Um, uh, I will just zoom out and show the, the final line art um, once the, this is finished running through. Um, so I hope this was helpful to you. Please post any comments or questions in the, well, in the comments in YouTube. Uh, so feel free to ask. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm pretty sure I've missed things or not gone over certain things that you might want to know about in the tutorial. So feel free to ask. Uh, there will be a link to the final line art on DeviantArt if anyone wants to try colouring it before I get to it. Also, there will be a link to my Tumblr. I don't think I've actually put my Tumblr link on here before, but uh, yeah. So I'll put that on there and also the references I spoke about earlier. Thank you for watching. Uh, I would say see you later, but I don't really see anyone, so uh, catch you later.